he showed them, um, it says that he showed them all through scripture where Moses spoke of him. And I'm sure there are many other places where, there's so many places where it's, it's almost clear to us in, in, the, in the text when we read it that Moses is speaking of Yeshua. But then there's these hidden alaptabs all over the, the Hebrew scriptures that I believe Yeshua is putting out those as well. Because Moses spoke of him all over the place because the Lord was speaking of him and of himself all over the place. So in front of that covenant is Messiah's blood. Thank you, Father. And so all the people, when they heard what, what the Lord just told Moses to say, you shall be a priesthood, a holy nation, a treasured property, all the people answered together. And that word together is a cod. It comes from the word a cod, which is one. It's not our understanding of together. I'm together. We're together right now as humans and stuff. But that's not the together that this is. This is they said it as one. As the Lord heard it as Yeshua saying, yes, all these things that we will do. Because he's the one that's doing it within us. And so all that the Lord has spoken, we will do. And Moses reported the Aleph Tav words because when they said we're going to do this thing, it's like they were making a vow, right? But the Lord as our father and as our husband has a right to say, no, you're not going to make that vow. I'm going to make that vow for you. And that's what he does for us. And so that Aleph Tav is there to show us that he's doing everything. Thank you, Father. He makes this covenant of love for us. And Yeshua says, I have manifested, I have revealed. And as he walked this earth, as he's walking this earth right now in each of you, Yeshua says, I have manifested your name, the outstretched arm, the blood, the rede redeemer, the, the savior of all. To the men whom you've given me out of the world, they were yours, you gave them to me, and they have kept. You're not going to say, I'll pop your word in the New Testament, but it's there. Because every time your word is referred to in the Hebrew scriptures, it's, it's a hadeverim. There's an Aleph Tav in front of them that speaks of the word of the Lord in this way. So we thank you, Father, for your Aleph Tav word and your love. And so, and I have to share a little personal thing right now. This happens to be my Torah portion. And so each of you are born at a time where, for centuries and centuries, when Yeshua went into the synagogue and he read, um, um, what is it? <laughs> he read from Isaiah. And I'm here to, uh, the, Lord is, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me to preach good news, to open the eyes of the blind. When he did that, he was reading from the prophets, which is the second reading that in synagogues all the world today, they're reading from Isaiah, Isaiah 6, I believe. So they're reading from that right now, but first you read from the Torah portion. So when Yeshua went into the synagogue, the Torah portion had been read, of course he is the Torah, but he as he is the Torah went up to read from the, uh, from the, from the prophets. And so each one of us are born at a time where a Torah portion is being read during that week. And so it's a beautiful thing to find out which is yours based on your birthday because there's something, there's a connection that the Lord will make to you with that Torah portion, with the words that are spoken. We connect to every single piece of the Torah, every letter, each one of us. But then there's something about that, that portion that's when the Lord calls you forth, you're birthed when he chooses you to be birthed. So anything around that birth has importance, has relevance, and is a blessing. So this happens to be mine, and I didn't learn, but a couple years ago, there was also my father's. And uh, my father died almost 20 years ago. And I just felt so strongly in my spirit today that this one here, who had a little one in this belly, who the Lord is weaving in this womb right now as we speak, and this is his, gonna be his first child. As I asked him to walk with the Torah as my father and to stand in for him, because we don't understand what we're doing in the natural necessarily, but things are happening in the spirit. And so I know my father would have been so blessed. He didn't, he didn't have that understanding at the time, but he was such a man of faith. And you know, go ahead, please. Um, one of the commandments is honor your, and it says your Aleph Tav father and your Aleph Tav mother, that your days may be long upon the land the Lord your God gives you. And so today, partially what I did is honor my father, my earthly father, who was such a blessing to me and who instilled in me such a faith. Even though I said, yeah, whatever, and I rebelled, and I said, no, I don't, I don't know what to do. And I watched him, and I watched him every moment he prayed, every time he lifted up the Lord when he, when he was um, very sick. And all he did was praise the Lord, and all he did was trust him. And I know it was so real. And so that little one in the womb right there is going to be watching you. And I just pray for strength for you, and that you would encourage that little one, that you would be encouraged even right now. Father, fill your son, lift him up, rise up within him, and fill him with the spirit of love and of mercy, Father, of your truth, of your Torah. May it rise up, rise up, rise up within him, Father. Create him to be you, Father, as that Father to that little one in there, Lord. We thank you, Father, for him. And Emily. 
and for the one that you're leaving. If only you know what's going on in there, Father. Thank you for your love, Lord. And so thank you, Kevin. And so I speak to you as if you are my Father sitting there. And what I saw you do today, I saw him do. So thank you. You are awesome, Adonai. Your ways are not our ways, Father. And you are faithful across generations, Adonai. You don't see generations the way we see generations. You don't see time the way we see time, Adonai. You are faithful to all generations, Adonai. And you are a creative God. When you said, let there be light, that wasn't the first time you created, and it wasn't the last. You are constantly creating, Father, and we can't comprehend all that you do, Adonai, but you are doing, Father. Religion tries to understand Adonai. Religion tries to put Adonai in a box, but God is, cannot be contained in a box. There's a song going out in spirit. It's being sung across the heavenlies. It's out there in space, spanning galaxies. It descends into earth. It permeates even this place. It permeates our hearts. It keeps going. There's a song that is being sung across time and that song goes like this. Goes the weasel. The Lord cannot be contained in a box. And as much as humans try to do this, and as much as humans try to package him up all pretty, and as some humans like this particular package, so they go over here and they call it a particular denomination. Mm. And then other humans like this particular package, and they call it a denomination. Mm. <laughs> Adonai is greater yes, he is. than any box we can put him in. Yes. And it's a blessing to know that. It's a blessing to know that you don't know nothing. Hallelujah. It's freeing to know that you don't know nothing. Not even Jack. Not even Jack. <laughs> Jack in the box. <laughs> There's a place in scripture that, that Paul says, like everybody was put like under sin, so nobody can boast. Yeah. I'll tell you when he comes back. We're all going to be confounded. <laughs> and we're all going to go, uh-oh. I didn't get it. Oops. That don't fit into my box. <laughs> ah. But love covers a multitude of sins. And that transcends all our little boxes. It's by his mercy and it's by his grace that if we, you know, make a little pretty package box and we jump in there, we jump around with a little jack that's in there. Mm. It's by his grace and it's by his mercy. Because he's in all these things. He's in that box. But he's also in this box. <laughs> <laughs> so it's by his grace and mercy do we find him. But he's the God that confounds the wise. So, anybody who thinks they got it, oops, that's the first indication that you don't got it. Like, God is, is a body, he's creating a body, and, and what happens is, we, he gives revelation to somebody, a new revelation about himself, because God is eternal, and we can't comprehend eternity. Right? Even mathematically, we can't comprehend eternity. 
You ever realize that the universe is eternal? Like it just keeps going, right? And going and going. Like there's no like start of this universe. You ever try to comprehend that? Like there's always something after it. Then you get there and something after that. It's eternal. Infinity. We can't comprehend infinity. Like eternity. We, just, we, we can't get it. But God, that's his space. He rolls with it. He rolls in this eternity. You know, we turn it as like we take a number eight and put it on its side mathematically, and that's infinity. He rolls with that. He's like, yeah, I get it. He's above all of that. But we don't get it. So then all of a sudden, a bit of eternity comes into our hearts. And we go, whoa! And we see a, a, a piece of God that we have not yet seen before. And it's like, whoa! Oh, look at this! Look what I discovered! And then humans in their box go, hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. No. And then the person who has the discovery goes, yes, 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 I saw this. But then humanity comes in, even with the one who got the discovery, who was revealed something, then all of a sudden something gets twisted. Well, I need to be with people who accept me and what I found. So, you get it, right? You, you do get it. They're nodding. Because <laughs> so you come with me and we're going to start our own little church or our own little synagogue over here. We're going to be the church of the little thing. That's how denominations start. Because he reveals a little bit of himself. But God is in the process and he will break down these things. These denominational things. And all things that are not true will pass away. Bad seed will die. It will fall to the ground. It will not bear fruit. Bad seed it won't bear fruit. It will die. And the only thing that remains is good seed, which is Mashiach himself. And what comes out of him is, is himself coming up manifesting himself and dropping more good seed. That is all that will remain. And there's a bit of that in all these denominations. But he will break, break those boxes because God can't be contained in a box. I would like to bring the children up for prayer. <laughs>